So I had nothing tonight. So Woo! anyway, yeah, Woo! Hey! exactly. So my name's Dan. I'm the son of a preacher man. Yes, it is true. It does really happen. And no, I haven't killed anyone. <laughs> so, but as the son of a preacher man or a pastor, minister, missionary, they're like traveling gypsies. They just carry Bibles and hit harder. <laughs> um, as the son of this, uh, as this missionary, I heard a lot of stories as I was growing up. And as a little little kid, you know, your job was to sit there and look really cute so they could drum up money, you know, because they're doing the Lord's work. And as these stories would go on, there would be moments where I'd be like, Really, Daddy? He'd like, shut up, Dan. So, storytelling in our family is kind of an art, and I'm going to try and practice that art tonight by telling you a story. This story is, let's say, for factual reasons, mostly true. It's true. And I'm going to tell you the truth, the whole truth, and everything but the truth. So, with that to be said, this is one of my first car buying experiences. And one of the things I've learned in storytelling is that a story should have morals, values, something you can give your audience to take into their life. Well, these are some lessons that I haven't quite learned yet, so hopefully I will take them going from here as well. So, my first car buying experience is coming from a missionary family. I always had really crappy cars. Cars that you had to fix yourself. I, my very first car, I actually had to put the engine into the car. I was given the shell of the car, and my dad's, here you go, son. If you're 16, that means you should be able to install an engine now. So, that was my very first car. Once I got, once I was graduated from college, yes, it does happen, moved to the cities, got a real job, I started thinking, well, this piece of crap 1984 Toyota Escort probably isn't the kind of car that exudes class and will get me a girlfriend, so I want car shopping. I found on Craigslist this beautiful 2000 Audi S4, and I thought, that is the car for me. And after driving two hours out into the middle of nowhere, Minnesota, I walk into this car dealership. I should have known something was wrong when this gentleman named Tony greeted me and there was no one else in the place. And he looked a little too enthusiastic about this. He obviously saw that I was like the 18 year old girl like, hee hee, I'm here to buy a car. And I said the Audi S4. He's like, yes, that one's very popular. And he knew that he had me right there. And he showed me outside to this beautiful black sleek car black on black, black tinted windows, and we're not talking just black, we're talking California black, pull you over by the cops, expect a black man to be inside black. It really did happen, I was pulled over in this car and rolled down the window, and the cop looked at me and said, never mind, please go. First time ever. Yeah, really, it's one of those strange things. So after buying this car, I decided to take it on a road trip. To give you a little bit of insight about this car, it went fast. It was also a beautiful car, and while driving downtown Minneapolis, I actually had a drunk girl walk up, try to get a ride home with me. I don't know where her home was, I don't think she did either, but she wanted me to take her there. So, I decided to take this beautiful now Audi that I bought all by myself, beautiful car, on a road trip to Maine to go see my family. Road trip went beautifully, got to Maine, had a great and horrible time with family, as all family vacations should, and I was on my way home, 4th of July weekend. If you've never drove in the East Coast on I-90, 4th of July weekend is rather busy time on the highway. There's a lot of cars. So while driving down the highway, had my earbuds in, happily listening to music, my partner sitting in the next seat, napping, there's this car that pulls up behind me starts honking his horn and I'm wondering oh he wants to pass so I slow down move over a little bit and start and so he keeps honking his horn and starts flashing his lights that's rather interesting I think to myself huh that's a funny smell cars should not have funny smells while you're going down the highway let's be clear about that so after a few minutes of this honking and flashing his lights he was kind and generous to keep doing this for about 10 minutes, <laughs> I decided to pull over and actually find out why he was trying to get my attention. Pull over, slowly, nonchalantly, get out of the car, and he comes screaming up at me, his arms flailing in the air. And what do I hear coming from his mouth? You're on fire! And I'm like, that is not what I expected. <laughs> 
And so, I calmly, because I still don't believe him yet, look under my car. Why, yes, sir, you are correct. That is a fire under my car. Thank you very much. So I proceed to open the hood. Yes, there is really still fire under the car and in the car now. As my partner still slowly waking up from her nap, wondering why we're stopped on the side of the highway. So my in initial reaction is, I should put this out. This requires liquids, fluids of any sort that I can find. So running to the trunk, digging around, of course I proper mail, I have everything in the trunk that one would ever need for something to happen. Anyways, I find a gallon of windshield washer fluid. It's fluid, right? So I grab it, I gallantly run up to the front of the car, spin the cap off, and proceed to dump it all over the engine. Which did happen to put out part of the fire, right before all the alcohol evaporated and exploded in my face, <laughs> taking my wonderful eyelashes with it. The kind gentleman that uh, waved me over realized about this time that he was dealing with an idiot or insane <laughs> lunatic and decided to leave. I said, oh, you got this now? I'm going to go that way. <laughs> so fortunately, a nice truck driver stopped by and saw my plight and not having eyebrows, and he thought I should help this young man on the side of the road. He pulled his truck over and I went running to him, screaming, help me, please? <laughs> and he hands me this gigantic fire extinguisher. And I thought, the world is saved, I have a fire extinguisher. This happy days, oh happy days, my car is saved. And I run back, spraying it all over this place. By this time, my partner, she's gotten out of the car and wondering what is going on. I probably should have told her that the car was on fire when I first got out. She didn't find it that amusing with me and a fire extinguisher, no eyebrows, screaming. <laughs> Word to the wise. Spray this fire extinguisher all throughout the bottom of the car, throughout the engine, and the flames go away. And I thought, oh, thank you, Lord, thank you. It's all going to be okay. And I'm watching, and I'm watching, and the flames come right back up. And I'm like, well, crap. I've tried windshield washer fluid. I've tried the fire extinguisher. They always told me the fire extinguisher's gonna work, right? No. But at that moment, the state sheriff pulled up behind me. And he looks at my car and I go running up to him, can I borrow your fire extinguisher? Because in my mind, fire extinguishers still put out flames. <laughs> and he's like, nah, it won't do any good. And you know you're really fucked when the state trooper's like, eh. <laughs> I'm like, what do I do? Seriously, my car's on fire, it's on the side of the highway. He's like, well, just get your stuff and move out of the way. And I'm like, you've done this before, haven't you? And he's like, yeah, a few times. And I'm like, thanks. So we proceed to start throwing our stuff out of the car like a madman. And the guy says, don't you have insurance? And I'm like, you know what? For the first time in my life, I do have comprehensive insurance. Fuck this shit, I'm getting away from this car. We throw all the stuff on the side of the bank and we sit back and we take some fantastic pictures of the car burning. That was my trip for the 4th of July. Thank you very much.